Today's topic is tetanus. Introduction to tetanus. Today we are diving deep into the world of tetanus, an ancient disease that has been around for centuries. It is caused by the bacterium Clostridium tetani which messes with the nervous system and leads to muscle stiffness. Let's take a trip back in time and explore some key moments in the history of tetanus. 5th century BC, Hippocrates, the legendary Greek physician, was the first to describe tetanus symptoms. However, the cause of the disease remained a mystery. 1884, fast forward to when Arthur, a German physician, discovered the tetanus pass in soil samples. He showed that a specific bacteria causes tetanus, but the exact infection mechanism was still unknown. Enter the iconic duo of Pere and Marie Curie, along with Emily. These French scientists demonstrated that the bacteria produced a potent neurotoxin responsible for tetanus symptoms. Researchers later figured out that this toxin interfered with nerve cell function, causing muscle stiffness and spasm. 1890 Development of Tetanus Antitoxin These German and Japanese scientists developed the first tetanus antitoxin. The treatment involved injecting serum from an immune animal into an infected person, providing passive immunity and saving lives. But long-term protection not so much 1920 development of tetanus toxide tetanus vaccination here comes Gaston Ramo a French veterinarian and biologist who developed first tetanus toxide vaccine by inactivating the tetanus toxin this vaccine was improved in the 1930s and became widely available during the World War II thanks to mass immunization campaigns we saw a significant drop in tetanus cases worldwide now before you are confused as to what tetanus antitoxin and tetanus toxide are let's see the difference between the two Tetanus antitoxin is derived from the serum of immunized animals, usually horses, while tetanus toxide is a modified inactivated form of the tetanus toxin. The mechanism of action of a tetanus antitoxin involves neutralizing the tetanus toxin by binding to it, providing immediate short-term protection after exposure. On the other hand, tetanus toxide stimulates the immune system to produce antibodies against the toxin, resulting in active long-lasting immunity through vaccination. In summary, tetanus antitoxin provides passive short-term immunity immunity whereas tetanus toxide offers active long-lasting immunity against tetanus. Cause of tetanus. Tetanus is caused by bacterium Clostridium titani which is commonly found in soil, dust and animal feces. The bacteria produces spores that can survive for long periods in the environment even in extreme conditions. Now if you are wondering if tetanus is contagious, no it is not. Tetanus is not contagious and cannot be transmitted from person to person. Then how does a person get infected? Infection occurs when Clostridium titani spores enter the body through a break in the skin such as a puncture wound, deep cut, burn or other type of injuries. The spores germinate and the bacteria multiply in absence of oxygen or anaerobic conditions which are common in deeper or contaminated wounds. As the bacteria multiply, they produce a potent neurotoxin called tetanospasmin. This toxin binds to nerve cells and interferes with the normal communication between nerves and muscles leading to muscle stiffness, spasm and other symptoms associated with tetanus. If left untreated, the toxin can spread to other parts of the nervous system and cause life-threatening complications such as respiratory failure and cardiac arrest. So be cautious and make sure your vaccinations are up to date. Problem in the world and developing countries. Tetanus is a global health concern that affects thousands of people every year. While a significant progress has been made in reducing tetanus cases, there are still areas where the battle continues, particularly in the developing countries. In the United States, the tetanus cases have dropped dramatically with approximately 30 reported cases per year thanks to widespread vaccination and improved wound care. In contrast, India faces a greater challenge with hundreds of tetanus cases reported annually. Limited access to vaccines, inadequate healthcare infrastructure and lack of awareness contribute to this ongoing struggle. Agent factors, the germ. Agent, the causative agent for tetanus is the bacterium Clostridium titani. This is gram-positive rod-shaped anaerobic sperm bearing organism. Anaerobic means it thrives in environments with little or no oxygen. It forms spores that are highly resistant to heat, desiccation and disinfectants, allowing them to survive in environments for extended periods as in years. Reservoir of infection. The primary reservoir of Clostridium titani is soil particularly in environments contaminated with animal feces. The spores can also be found in dust and other surfaces in the environment. The bacterium is not part of normal human flora and humans are considered accidental hosts when they become infected through open wounds. Exotoxin. Clostridium titani produces a 
potent neurotoxin called titanospasmin, which is responsible for the symptoms of tetanus. Once the bacterium enters the body through a wound, it multiplies and releases the toxin. The toxin then binds to the nerve cells, disrupting the normal communication between nerves and muscles. This interference results in muscle stiffness, spasm, and other symptoms associated with tetanus. The exotoxin is extremely potent and even a small amount can cause severe symptoms. The lethal dose for a 70 kg man is about 0.1 mg. Toxin acts on four areas of the nervous system, the motor and plates of the skeletal system, the spinal cord, the brain and the sympathetic system. Its principal action is to block the inhibition of the spinal reflexes. Period of communicability. A tetanus is not a communicable disease meaning it cannot be transmitted from person to person. Host factors the person. Immunization status. The most crucial host factor for tetanus is an individual's vaccination history. Those who have received the appropriate doses for the tetanus vaccine are, are at a lower risk of developing tetanus Individuals who have not been vaccinated or have not received booster shot as recommended are at a higher risk of infection. DTAP, TDAP and TD. Age. Infants and young children, especially newborns, are more susceptible to tetanus due to their immature immune systems. Neonatal tetanus is a significant concern in areas with poor maternal immunization and inadequate hygiene practices during childbirth. Older adults over 40 or more may also be at a higher risk if they are not received booster vaccinations or have weakened immune system. Wound care. The risk of tetanus increases at the severity and the type of wound. Deep puncture wounds, crush injuries, burns or wounds contaminated with dirt, feces or foreign objects provide a favorable environment for Clostridium titani to multiply and produce toxins. Proper wound care including cleaning, disinfection and appropriate medical attention reduces the risk of tetanus. Health status. Individuals with a weakened immune system due to chronic illnesses, immunosuppressive medications or other factors may be more susceptible to tetanus. Additionally, people with diabetes or peripheral vascular diseases may have reduced blood flow to injured tissues creating a low oxygen environment that favors Clostridium titani growth. Jog Geographic location. People living in areas with limited access to healthcare, poor sanitation, low vaccination rates are at a higher risk of tetanus. Tetanus spores are more prevalent in environments contaminated with animal feces, making rural or agricultural areas more prone to infection. Socioeconomic factors, poverty, lack of access to healthcare services, and limited awareness about vaccination and wound care can all contribute to an increased risk. Environmental factors place. Tetanus occurrence depends on the man's physical and ecological surroundings and not on the absence or presence of infection in the population. The environmental factors along with unhygienic customs and habits in the rural areas contribute to the development of the disease. Due to urbanization and mechanization of agricultural practices in USA and other developed countries have disturbed the normal process of distribution of Clostridium titani thereby reducing the morbidity rate in the last 40 years. Mode of transmission. Tetanus is not a contagious disease meaning it is not transmitted from person to person. The mode of transmission involves the the entry of Clostridium titani spores into the body to the bricks and skin. This can happen through puncture wounds, cuts and lacerations, burns, crush injuries, contaminated wounds, animal bites can introduce spores into the body. It can happen in minor cuts or scratches as well. Once the spores enter the body, they germinate and multiply in an anaerobic environment producing the potent neurotoxin titanospasmin which causes the symptoms of tetanus. Incubation period. The incubation period for tetanus refers to the time between the entry of Clostridium titani spores into the body and the to the first symptoms. This period can vary depending on factors such as severity and location of the wound, the amount of toxin produced and the individual's immune response. On average, the incubation period for tetanus ranges from 6 to 10 days. However, it can be as short as one day or as long as several months in rare cases. Generally, shorter incubation periods are associated with more severe cases of tetanus as the rapid onset of symptoms may indicate a higher concentration of toxins in the body. It is important to note that even if the incubation period is prolonged, the tetanus can still progress rapidly once symptoms appear, making timely diagnosis and treatment crucial for a favorable outcome. Early Symptoms of Tetanus Watch this video on the early symptoms of tetanus. Recognizing the early symptoms of tetanus is crucial in ensuring timely treatment and the best possible outcome. As tetanus progresses can become life-threatening, so let's learn about the warning signs to watch out for. The early symptoms of tetanus may include muscle stiffness, particularly in the joint neck, difficulty swallowing, also called as lockjaw, muscle spasm or cramp 
cramping starting in the jaw and neck and progressing to the other parts of the body painful involuntary contractions fever and sweating if you or someone you know experiences any of these symptoms especially after a recent wound or injury seek medical attention immediately prompt intervention can make all the difference in the fight against tetanus can you get tetanus from a scratch watch this video do you need a tetanus shot while it is less common it is still possible to get tetanus from a scratch especially if the wound is contaminated with dirt feces and other substances containing clostridium tetanus spores the risk of tetanus from a scratch is generally lower than that of a deep puncture wounds lacerations or burns because the bacteria prefer low oxygen environments which are more common in deeper wounds to minimize the risk of tetanus infection from a scratch is essential to practice proper wound care clean the wound immediately with soap and water and then apply antiseptic to help prevent infection keep the wound clean and dry if you're unsure of tetanus vaccination status or if the scratch is deep contaminated or not healing well consult your doctor for advice they may recommend a tetanus booster shot or other interventions depending on the specific situation and your medical history what is the time limit to get a tetanus shot watch this video what is the time limit to get a tetanus shot of the injury it should be taken as early as possible preferably with six hours most of them are vaccinated as the vaccine incorporate the immunization programs of many countries types of tetanus watch this video on type of tetanus types of tetanus are traumatic puerperal autogenic idiopathic and tetanus neonatal prevention of tetanus combined vaccine monovalent vaccine passive immunization active and passive immunization antibiotics tetra and eta tetanus toxicity the importance of prevention in tetanus cannot be overstated as it significantly reduces the risk of infection and potentially life threatening complications associated with the disease combined vaccine combined vaccines are vaccines that protect against multiple diseases in a single shot several combined vaccines include protection against tetanus as part of their formulation These vaccines typically contain tetanus toxicide which is an inactivated form of tetanus toxin to stimulate an immune response against the bacterium Clostridium tetani. Here are some examples of combined vaccines that provide tetanus protection: Dita, diphtheria, tetanus and acellular pertussis. This vaccine protects against diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis that is whooping cough and is given to infants and children as part of the routine vaccination schedule. DTWP similar to Dita, this vaccine also protects against diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis but uses the whole cell pertussis This component is commonly used in countries like India as part of the routine vaccination schedule. Tdap, the vaccine is given as a booster to adolescents and adults to maintain protection against tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Td, this vaccine produces protection against tetanus and diphtheria and is used as a booster for adults every 10 years to maintain immunity against these diseases. Hexavalent vaccines, these vaccines protect against six diseases: diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, hemophilus influenza type B, and, and hepatitis B. They are given to infants as part of the routine vaccination. vaccination schedules in some countries these combined vaccines simplify vaccination schedules and reduce the number of injections needed while providing protection against multiple diseases including tetanus passive immunization in case of tetanus passive immunization is achieved by administering tetanus immune globulin or tetanus antitoxin to an individual this preparation contains antibodies against the tetanus toxin which can neutralize the toxin and provide immediate temporary protection against the disease tetanus immune globulin is derived from human plasma and is preferred choice for passive immunization against tetanus passive immunization with tig is typically used in the following situations post exposure prophylaxis if an individual with unknown or incomplete tetanus vaccination history suffers a wound that carries a high risk of tetanus infection tig may be administered to provide immediate protection this is often done in conjunction with active immunization using a tetanus containing vaccine like tdap or dtap tetanus treatment in confirmed cases of tetanus tig is administered as part of the treatment plan to utilize circulating tetanus toxin and help prevent further progression of the disease this is done alongside other supportive care measures such as wound care antibiotics and management of symptoms it is important to note that passive immunization with a tig or tetanus antitoxin provides only temporary protection against tetanus as the administered antibodies will eventually be cured from the body active immunization with tetanus containing vaccines is necessary to stimulate immune system to produce its own antibodies and ensure long term protection in disease to fully grasp the concept of tetanus prevention is essential to understand the differences between active and passive immunization both play a crucial role in safeguarding our health but they work in distinct ways active immunization involves administering a vaccine containing weakened or inactivated pathogens like the tetanus toxicity vaccine stimulates the immune system to produce its own antibodies against the disease provides long lasting immunity typically achieved through the series of vaccination and booster shots examples are dtap tdap and tdvaxin 
vaccines. Passive immunization provides temporary protection by directly administering preformed antibodies. Does not stimulate the immune system to produce its own antibodies. Offers immediate short-term immunity in emergency situations or when a person is at high risk of infection. Example is the tetanus immune globuli TIG. Both active and passive immunization can play a role in tetanus prevention. Active immunization through vaccination is the most effective long-term strategy while passive immunization with the TIG can provide immediate protection in certain situations. Again, consulting with the doctor will help determine the best approach based on individual needs and circumstances. Antibiotics So when it comes to treating a tetanus, antibiotics play a key role in eliminating the bacteria Clostridium titani from the infection site. But remember, they are just one part of a bigger treatment plan which also involves wound care, tetanus immune globulin and supportive care to handle symptoms and complications. Now to the go-to antibiotic for tetanus is metronidazole given through an IV for about 7 to 10 days. It's great for fighting anaerobic bacteria like Clostridium titani, stopping bacterial growth and reducing toxin production. But if someone can't take metronidazole, penicillin G can be the alternative. Just know that it's not as effective as metronidazole discussed with the doctor. Keep in mind that antibiotics won't cut it. They need to be combined with other treatments like TIG, wound care, supportive care to manage the disease effectively. And starting this whole treatment process as soon as possible is the key to improving odds of recovery and avoiding severe complications. Both DTAP and TDAP, both vaccines are inactivated and protect against diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis, but they are designed for different age groups. DTAP is for infants and young children usually under 7 years old. It's given in 5 doses at 2, 4, 6, 15 to 18 months and 4 to 6 years. This vaccine has higher diphtheria and pertussis antigen component and serves as a primary immunization for these diseases in the young kids. On the other hand, TDAP is for adolescents and adults. It's given as a single booster dose typically at age 11 to 12 followed by TD booster every 10 years. TDAP has a lower diphtheria and pertussis antigen content and is designed to boost immunity and protect older individuals against diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis. Side effects of tetanus vaccine. Watch this video on the side effects of tetanus vaccine. The side effects of tetanus vaccine such as DTAP, TDAP and TDAP are generally mild and go away on their own. Common side effects include pain, redness, swelling at the side of the side, low grade fever, fatigue, headache, muscle or joint pain. In rare cases more severe side effects may occur such as allergic reaction or persistent crying in infants. If you or your child experience any severe or persistent side effect, consult a doctor. Prevention of neonatal tetanus. Neonatal tetanus can be prevented by ensuring that the pregnant women are adequately immunized against tetanus, which provides both the mother and the baby. The following measures can help prevent neonatal tetanus. Ensuring that women of childbearing age receive recommended tetanus-containing vaccines, TDAP or TD, and boosters. Administer tetanus toxide-containing vaccines to pregnant women if their immunization status is uncertain or if they have not received a booster within the last 10 years. Practice proper hygiene and aseptic techniques during childbirth including clean delivery practices and cord care. Prevention of tetanus after injury. To prevent tetanus after injury especially with the deep or contaminated wounds, take the following steps. Thoroughly clean and disinfect the wound. Consult your doctor if you need a tetanus booster or a tetanus immune globulin based on your vaccination history and the nature of the wound. If necessary, receive the tetanus containing vaccine as recommended by your doctor. Monitor the wound for signs of infection and seek medical attention if necessary. Tetanus and animal bites, risk and prevention strategies. Animal bites, especially from dogs, cats and other mammals can carry a risk of tetanus due to the potential for contamination with Clostridium titani spores to reduce the risk of tetanus from animal bites. Ensure that you are up to date with the tetanus vaccinations and boosters. Thoroughly clean and disinfect the bite wound immediately after the incident. Seek medical attention and evaluate the need for tetanus booster or TIG as well as other treatments such as antibiotics or rabies prophylaxis. Monitor the wound for signs of infection and follow up with your healthcare provider as needed. Take preventive measures to avoid animal bites such as not approaching unfamiliar animals and ensuring that pets are properly vaccinated and supervised. Do not cover the dog bite wound. Make sure you wash it with soap and water and uh, seek medical attention. Even if your pet dog bites you, you are required to take the full dose of rabies vaccine as there are documented evidence of rabies being transmitted from vaccinated pets. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.